This week, our remote viewers were tasked to look at a highly relevant near future target that will impact every single person on the planet. A special thank you to Edward Reardon, whose data was so incredibly technical that I actually needed AI in order to understand what he was saying. Fascinating data, but oh my goodness, did he go deep. The whole team brought back very corroborating data, very relevant data. This target is a good one. I'm joined with Edward, Daz, Dick, and Naeem. We're getting ready to debrief this project. Doing a quick check in here with our viewers. Edward, starting with you and your chemical compound breakdown on this target. How are you feeling about your project here, sir? I loved it. Yeah, I love the session. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I was. It was one of those sessions where... Uh, you know, the session is just pulling me through. Yeah. And, and, I'm just and it's one of those on, on face value. When I looked at this, I was like, how the heck is this related to the target? It is, you know, don't get me wrong, but because you just go so deep and technical on, on your data on that one, it was like, oh my gosh, I really had to do some digging on it. Um, but really good work, Edward, really good work. I'm looking forward to sharing that with everybody. All right, Daz, checking in with you. How are you feeling about this session? Um, well, I don't know what the target is. Um, but it seemed, yeah, it seemed interesting. Very, I had lots of really weird chemical kind of molecule, molecular kind of really small weird weird stuff. Yeah, yeah. very. There's a lot of crossover with the chemical compound breakdown, which I wouldn't expect with a target like this. Uh, but it's definitely there for. I think I think you, Edward, and Naeem mm, were touching on chemical compounds, which is really cool. So nicely done. All right, Dick. Well, I guess I'm the odd man out. I I. I went off in a weird tangent that I didn't understand. So I, I actually, terms were coming to me and I wrote it down and I thought, am I making this up? So I put it in AI after I was done with the session. In AI, I said, oh yeah, it's this, this, and this. And then I checked elsewhere and this terms had never been used. I mean, it was not anything in the scientific lexicon. So I'll be interested to see feedback. Not directly, Dick, yeah. but that term is, it's like a combination of a couple of phrases. So you're, you're in the ballpark and to pull that out as a remote viewer and it be relevant to the target is, is pretty good. So that was, that was a good data point you brought back. Now I am checking in with you and how you're feeling about this project. This was like a lot of technical, um, I don't know, a fabrication process, the creation of some, you know, technology type stuff, maybe more than one. Like, I don't know if this is all the same thing or a processes, a bunch of processes or something. But, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see exactly what, yeah, what it's the, all the about. The vision of effort on this among all four of you was great. You all had your own little piece. There was some overlap for sure. But you all kind of kept your own unique areas on this one. So nice job on that. So let's take a look at the data. Let's start with Edward, and he can walk us through his chemical structures and compounds and signals and all sorts of wild stuff. Yeah, that was that was intense. Um, and I need to – I'm not going to reveal the target this second, but when I reveal the target, I think this will be even funnier. Um, the fact that you said liquid metal and adamantium, that like that liquid <laughs> – that's the worst thing you could say for this target. I'm going to say that right now, Naeem, given the, in a good way in terms of your data, but given the science fiction lore that surrounds this project. So you guys are starting to get an idea of what it might be. But when you said liquid metal and then adamantium, I was like, oh my gosh, here we go. All right. So let me um, just do a quick follow up on this. You know, looking at this new crystal that they're creating, any idea what purpose that it served, Naeem, what the function of it was for? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> the first thing I saw was the um, server type thing, you know, research project uh, kind of environment, which I'm, you know, I'm become biased from that, you know, because I don't know what the target is. I would imagine it's maybe for some kind of computer chip but i feel like it's probably more than that just because most of my data kept revolving around like materials and what i think is maybe some kind of metallurgy uh type thing so i mean i don't know that was bizarre when i saw the crystal thing i was just like a lump of crystalline structure that feels like a new element but um you know i can't really say 
I don't know how it fits into the to the wider scope of of what the target is. And there's it's tough. And, and the reason why I'm asking you guys some of these questions is because I think there's uh, predominantly two ways to interpret some of this data. Once you once I reveal the target, I'll explain what that is. Um, so that, that's what I think that's what we need to keep in mind is is you know are we looking at option A or option B because you guys both brought you you all brought back data that kind of fits a couple different possibilities and I think time will tell I know that sounds very vague and ambiguous so let me give you guys what the target was I mean that was a great session I think you have a lot of the infrastructure behind uh, what this target is as well all right this week's target is artificial general intelligence which is why it was so scary when I was talking about liquid metal and adamantium which I don't think they're creating terminators here but um, let's talk about artificial general intelligence here. Let's go through our debrief real quick. Your sub Q, and this is important. The remote viewer is to view the first future AGI and describe where it will be created, housed, and used. So those are three very specific sub Qs there. So this project is not about current AI systems. It's not ASI, artificial super intelligence. The focus is on the first threshold moment where AGI is realized. I'm going to break down the difference uh, in a moment on the next slide. But why does this matter? Because AGI represents a fundamental transition from narrow, task-specific AI to generalized intelligence capable of adapting across domains. Let's explore that a little bit more. Right now, we have what's called ANI, Artificial Narrow Intelligence. Uh, AI can imp- appear intelligent while reframing, I'm sorry, while remaining fundamentally task bound. All currently publicly known AI systems fall into this category. So even ChatGPT that has these elaborate conversations and connections is still considered ANI. Okay, let's look at AGI versus AI. So AGI is intelligence capable of performing any intellectual task a human can. It's a machine capable of performing any intellectual task a human can do with the same breath and flexibility. Generally, the ability to write poems, solve equations, offer advice on moral dilemmas, and acquire new skills with contextual nuance. AI right now is not capable of finding all those connections unless you direct it to it. Where AGI, once we get there, that's the goal. It's going to have just that memory that it can access at any point in time. Dennis, can I share something real quick? I think that's what this equation is here. These are the fragmented pieces you just were talking about and how they equate with these blocks of these uh, chip blocks or whatever. Yes, fragmented or task specific memory as being a part of the problem, the lack of persistence. Yeah, that, that, um, that I think is what I was attempting to describe there. And I think that's significant to point out. I think that's why this analysis was particularly challenging is because you're describing conceptual things. There may be physical components that address that, right, hardware or even software, but it's all conceptual stuff that we really don't have, at least us at our level, don't have vocabulary for. So your sketch matches that wonderfully, I think, in, in trying to describe that. But for those trying to you know, understand what remote viewers are doing, they're describing things and trying to put it in words that we can understand that we may not have words for right now. Yeah. And that, that's, then what they're saying there, the current AI systems are limited by fragmented or task-specific memory. And, and that what I was attempting to draw on that sketch were those fragmented pieces and how they equated to the non-fragmented pieces. So that that was the that was the equation that was att- attempting to be resolved. Yeah, what I was attempting to describe. I'm was, glad you caught that. That makes a lot of sense. Viewing sessions are so interesting, man. It's yeah. If it's if it was just so black and white, remote viewing would be really boring. Right. Right. No, that's that's very helpful as we're going through this. You know, I spent hours staring at all this data. And as you guys go through your sessions, I'm still trying to throw stuff in because when you guys speak about it, it just brings more of it together as you're starting to understand this. So thank you for sharing that. So let's, let's get into our analysis here. That was a lot to go through. That was a lot to try to understand and wrap my brain around. around. Thanks to you guys for pulling this data back. Let's do a quick check in so we can wrap this one up. I'll go Edward, Naeem, and then Daz. Edward, starting with you. Great. Yeah, just great stuff. Let me let me share something real quick that I found. Very, very cool stuff here. So here's the carbon nanotubes. And I, I had to look that up. 
Carbon nanotubes are being used to create more energy efficient AI chips, which can significantly improve their performance and efficiency for artificial intelligence applications. Now, it was interesting because as I was doing this session, I was being reminded of several old sessions that I did many, many years ago of the uh, nanophotonics and carbon nanotubes like that. And it kept coming through. Uh, I think that was a, the main aspect of my session was how these kinds of computer systems will be built. And I think that they're going to be very different than what we're used to, where we just press the button and we hear, you know, I think they're going to be far more advanced. And, um, yeah, I think that that was, that's what I was picking up on that, on that session. It's very cool. Very cool stuff, man. Great, great session by everybody. This was really a fascinating project. Yeah. Nice work on that, Edward. Thank you for sharing that. Naeem, I have you next. Yeah, really interesting target and the analysis that was deep. Yeah. Um, yeah, the whole, you know, whether the, some of the data was how it's created or what it's going to be used for. Um, I saw, you know, I saw a server room and had the idea of, um, nano wafers and, you know, data processing. My, you know, based off my data, I would say it'll probably be, you know, not too different from how we have, you know, server farms running AI right now. Um, but the whole idea of like new elements being created, new materials, that, I mean, I think that's probably something that AGI might lend a hand in, maybe some breakthroughs in material sciences that lines up with what you said in the um in the analysis that you know like we won't be getting that first you know the corporations and people who make things you know that side of the system would be getting those kind of breakthroughs first i mean a new material is created you know that doesn't really help us directly but they make they'll make new things out of that they'll create new technologies out of that um yeah that was a really interesting one i'll be looking forward to seeing if they create some kind of new crystal you know crystal substance that maybe plays a big role in um computing yeah for sure and hopefully they tell us about it and uh, first i'm sure they won't especially based on daz's data it's going to be corporate uh, you know and military that are holding that but eventually i'm sure it will come out for sure i am thank you all right daz last but not least your reactions to this project yeah, very interesting data. Um, you know, seeing everyone's data and uh, knowing what I do about AI and stuff, it's uh, all seems very on par with how I think it's going to develop. Uh, although we didn't get any bad stuff, but I guess we weren't tasked to look at the bad stuff. But there will be you, bad you stuff weren't. It was it. It avoided all that potential because it was just looking at you know when it first rolls out, right? How was it created? Where is it housed? Yeah. And how are they going to use it initially? Yeah. I, I got to bring it back though. Naeem said liquid metal and adamantium, <laughs> so that's not a good sign given <laughs> given uh, the science fiction. Yeah, uh, I think we've discussed in the past, and as you know, because you know me and you dialogue on AI all the time. I'm you know, I watch many videos about AI, AI every week, so yeah, I I know the inevitability of what's coming down the pipe. Um, so all the stuff that we saw makes sense. You know, all the I saw all the uh, details in like in Naeem's crystalline structure and Dick's stuff. That was probably something to do with the uh, Google quantum computer that they they invented this this year. I think it was called Willow, and it, it, it actually moved into other dimensions to to get information in you know source problems someone said that, that too stuff. yeah yeah, yeah someone so, mentioned that yeah I, I think it's called willow i think it's like a 105 qubit super computer uh yeah it well you know using this new chip technology that actually reaches into other dimensions to solve equations and it solves you know what took it five minutes would have took i think the fastest computers before it 10 septillion years to, to do so yeah and that's so that's something to do with quantum computers and dick had all this dimensional stuff and we all had quantum stuff so it's coming i don't want to go on uh, too much of a 
of a deep dive, but uh, the Monroe Institute has one of the focus levels where there's no time, right? So you go there and it feels like you're gone for six hours and it's been 30 seconds. And I know we've all experienced that in certain dream states and altered states. I wonder if that's what's happening. That just goes into another dimension. It'll take 5 million years to process it. And then it just comes back to us in, in 30 seconds. Who knows? Weird stuff. Yeah. It seems but, that's where it's going. So yeah, I definitely saw huge amounts of data across all everyone's sessions that, that, coincide with what i know about ai and quantum technologies and all that kind of stuff so yeah it makes total sense to me well like i said many times this was so above my head um so i learned a lot uh, you guys did great on this one for those of you that are watching for those of you who are smarter than me uh w- what are you seeing what are we missing what what information do we need that's important to our future forecasting group community please put in the chats in the comments any other final comments right before i wrap this up Okay. All right. Well, great work by everybody. So on behalf of Edward, Naeem, Daz, Dick, and the rest of the Future Forecasting Group, I'm Dennis Nappy II. Thanks for watching. Watch the full debrief at ffgrv.com.